Hi everyone, it's Anthony from Gateball Refereeing Centre. Today we're going to be talking about probably one of the hardest, probably I'd say the second hardest shot to do in Gateball, but perhaps the highest risk, and that is the jump touch. Now, there are a lot of videos out there that teach you how to do jump touches. Uh, everyone has their own way. I'm going to teach you my way of doing dump jump touches, which are probably going to be the easiest to complete, uh, where you'll get the best results. You'll get the highest extremes of jumps, but they're also the easiest to get wrong. So you can become incredibly good at these with practice, and the key with these is practice. You have to practice, 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 practice. And of course, a jump touch is an incredibly high risk maneuver and something that you really only want to do if it's a last resort. Uh, if the game is ending, you really need to get somewhere and your, opponent, uh, your teammates can get you a jump touch opportunity. Uh, maybe it's something you can pull out of the bag. Of course, you want to do, you probably want to set up a slide before you'd set up a jump touch because the slide is a higher chance of being completed compared to a jump touch. But there are of course situations that preclude you from doing a slide, such as being really close to um, uh, boundary lines. Uh, so we're gonna discuss it. And here I've got uh, the, the, the four ball and the one ball. And I'm at gate two, you can't see it because it's sideways, but this is gate two and I, I really need to get up to gate three. Time's been called, I've just been called by the referee and I need one point to win. And ball four is for gate three. But what am I gonna do? I'm all the way over here. There are no other balls around me. Well, my only option is to jump touch. Now, there are a variety of ways you can do this. I know a lot of people do it between the legs croquet style. Uh, personally, I don't really like that. I think it's a little bit inconsistent. Uh, the way I do this is to the side. So I use a golf style. I get down almost exactly the same as how I would normally for my normal uh, single ball stroke. But what I'm going to do is we're going to incline our stick face so that instead of being flat on the ground, it's pointing at around two o'clock on a clock face if it was on the ball. Now, these balls are about, oh, I don't know, about 15 or so centimeters apart. This is probably one of the easiest ways to do a jump touch uh, when they're this close. Any closer it becomes very harder, any further apart it becomes much, much, much harder. Further apart jump touches where they're really far apart, I mean, some of them are almost borderline impossible. When they're really close, you also have a fear of uh, having a stroking foul in the form of a double touch. We're hitting the stroker's ball twice. Uh, so what we want to do is, we get down in our normal uh, stance, we get to two o'clock, and then here from this point, there's two things you can do. You can either be incredibly wristy, and you can cock the wrists and jump over. This is generally makes the ball jump really, really, really high. So the, the miss that you have with jump touches is you, you, your ball, the stroker's ball, jumps completely over the other ball. And that's the worst thing you can do. I mean, it's completely useless and often you end up out of bounds. So you can either do the wrist cocking method or you can use the straight, straight through method. You're still following that same linear path that we we're talking about, just a little bit on the inside and then through. But you're just doing it by the one of two ways, which is really important. So I'll attempt to do it here, but I'll tell you what, it's, it's relatively difficult. Let's see how we go. So we got a good result there. So we can see that the four ball is right in front of gate three and the one ball is in the middle of the court. Uh, that's probably the best result that we can get out of doing this, but of course it's incredibly difficult to do and incredibly low percentage in comparison to doing a slide. So in conclusion, we really always want to be setting up slides in comparison to doing jump touches, but jump touches can be a viable solution to not having a slide opportunity or an availability should the situation of the game preclude it from occurring. So I'll just explain the other method of doing the jump touch, which is between the legs, but uh, actually maybe I'll do it in this direction. I'll try to do it in this direction. But in all honesty, this is much, much harder in my opinion to do. So it's exactly the same as how we normally hit, except that instead of being flat, we move forward, creating downward angle with the stick so that we can create a downward angle into the court and over the 10 ball, just clipping it. Similar to that. Obviously, 
we still got the touch. I mean, I, my, not, uh, my six ball struck the, the, uh, the gate number there, which would be very unfortunate. Nothing would happen in that case since the gate number's part of the gate. But um, we got the jump touch in that situation. And perhaps you'll be better with those ones. Perhaps actually I will just deviate for a moment and I'll talk about the court type and consistency. The firmness of the court, whether it has rained in the morning, whether it has not rained in the morning, whether it hasn't rained in a few days, whether you're playing on clay, whether you're playing on gravel, makes a huge difference as to your ability to create a jump touch. We want to make sure that we've practiced on the court for at least a few minutes before we attempt to do a decent jump touch because the resistance, if it hasn't rained, the ball's going to jump like high heaven over the other one. Whereas if it's really soft and spongy, the ball's not going to jump that much at all. Obviously this morning I've had a bit of practice on this court, so I know how to perform on properly. But that shot would be nigh on impossible should I not know the resistancy of the playing surface that I'm on. So it's really important to test the court, if you're able to obviously, before you perform a jump touch, which again is an incredibly high risk maneuver and something that really shouldn't be attempted unless it's a last resort. Unless you are like me and you practice them for hours on end and they're incredibly consistent in your arsenal of shots, then perhaps your captain might agree that it's a viable strategy for you to utilize in the game. But of course, slides are always much more effective because your chances of hitting the ball are a lot more, I mean, they're a lot higher in comparison to just, I mean, this shot's incredibly difficult when you think of it. You've got to just clip the ball so that it just lands on and then goes across. That's an incredibly hard thing to do and it takes an immense amount of precision. Uh, I might actually just explain how to do a really close up jump shot, uh, jump touch, sorry. The far away jump shots I won't explain because, the uh, jump touches I won't explain just because they're exactly the same thing as before, you just need to find in your swing how far, so we were striking two o'clock, do I need to strike one o'clock to get further down? Obviously the further away you are, the higher you're going to need to jump because the ball has to travel a greater distance. So when you're doing really close ones, and they're ones that are closer than 10 centimeters together, incredibly hard jump touches to do. Oh, my three balls running away from me. These are probably one of the hardest shots to do. You have to be incredibly vertical. You're hitting the ball at almost one o'clock on the clock face. You're also putting the ball very far back in your stance. You can see that the ball is well behind me on this side. A normal jump, uh, jump touch would be here but you can see that the ball is well behind me in this direction and you're really, this is almost all wrists. You pretty much have to use your wrists here and you just have to bash down on the ball and it will not go as far. It's unfortunately physics, it will not go as far if you were to do this legally because we don't want to touch the ball twice because that's a touching the ball, that's a hitting the, hitting the stroker's ball in the same stroke foul. So we just want to hit down. Now that was a foul if you heard it. I actually struck the three ball there. So you can see how easy it is to accidentally foul while trying to do this shot. Really down, like that. Now that one was a completely legal shot, but the first one, as you can see, even for someone who does these quite regularly, I practice them for a few hours a week, it's very easy to make a mistake with these ones. So that's the jump touch and a few little explanations of how to hit them. Uh, using my method to the side, but also explaining how to do them between the legs. Hope to see you on the channel sometime soon, and I hope you've enjoyed the video.